friends here we are talking about read command to provide inputs for variables see this is the syntax for read command simply read options variable or variables and here there are different types of options but we are going with these three options as they are mostly using in your real time and here suppose if you want to use read command for one variable then simply the syntax is read options and then variable now let me explain about this with a simple shell script see suppose i am defining a variable called my shell as bash in your shell script itself and then i am displaying the content like the shell is whatever the stored in your variable that value i am displaying in this way now let me run this yes you are getting the output is the shell is and the value which is there in this my shell variable that is bash yes fine so here directly you define your bash value for your my shell variable in your shell script itself but instead of that i want to provide my variable value while executing my shell script from command line that means in an interactive way yes you can do it by using read command so simply for that what you have to do is read then your variable so my variable required variable is my shell i want to take this as a variable because here i am using that variable to display the value so save it and run it so now your cursor is waiting on your command line so actually it is waiting for input so let me type some input called bash and then hit enter yes see because of this read command from command line whatever the value you are entering that value is going to store into this variable that's it now let me rerun and this time i am providing a shell as k shell yes but here while executing your shell script simply your cursor is waiting on your terminal on your command line instead of that if it provides some prompt message uh, like please enter your shell something like that then that would be more clear so for that you have an option called hyphen p in your read command then for that you have to use syntax in this way enter your let's say shell type be clear hyphen p option whatever the message you want to display on your command line whatever the prompt you want to use on your command line that message you have to write inside double quotations see here i have given some space here be clear let me run it then i will show you that enter your shell type so i am let's say i am giving bash now i am removing this space at the end of your prompt message and then i am rerunning now see that previously you got some space between your prompt message and whatever the input you are going to provide but now there is no space so because of that here at the end of your double quotations you one space that's better that's fine so this is the way how we can read a variable value from command line while executing your shell script not only one variable you can read multiple variables so for that you can use any number of times your read command now let me take read hyphen p enter your scripting then i am taking variable called my scripting save it yeah let me display that my scripting is let's say dollar my scripting now i am rerunning our shell script because of first read command you are getting this prompt message and then now whatever the data you are going to enter that will store into this variable and then in the third line you are displaying now see if i hit enter the shell is bash and then because of fourth line you are getting this prompt message and then whatever the value you are going to enter here that will go and store into my scripting so here i am typing let's say bash shell scripting that's it that's fine now here suppose if you have some escaped characters in your input like slash n slash t slash v what will happen now let me uh, comment let's say these two lines see commenting is nothing but while executing your code they don't execute now let me rerun i am giving shell type as bash shell 
slash n new shell and tab is something message I am giving. Now see the result. You are getting entire thing except slashes here. So by default, you don't get that slash n slash b slash t as data while reading your read command. To preserve as it is your special or escaped characters, you have to take read command with hyphen or option. Now let me rerun and see the result. Now let me copy and paste this entire content again. Now see in the output you are getting as it is your escaped characters. So for that you will take hyphen or option. So from here onwards I will use always by default hyphen or for read command. That is the best practice. That's fine. Now let me comment these two lines also. Now if you execute your code, you don't get anything because your entire code is commented. There is no logic to execute. That's it. That's fine. See suppose if you want to read a password using read command. Yes, you can do it. Read hyphen or p. Let's say enter your password. Then I am taking a variable called my password. That means whatever the password you are going to enter on your command line that will go and store into this variable. And if you want to see what is the password, then simply uh, use echo command. Your password is dollar your password variable. That's it. Now let me run it and see the result. So password I am typing like I love shell scripting. Yes, you are getting. See, suppose if you don't want to display your password while typing on your command line here, then there is an option with read command that is with hyphen s. Anyway, from eighth line, wantedly we are displaying on command line. Let me comment this. Now from read command, while typing your password on command line, I don't want to display. So for that, you have to take hyphen s option. Now let me run the script once again. Now I am typing the password like I love shell scripting. But you are not getting, it is not displaying on your command line. So this is the way how you can hide your password while typing on your command line. But here you have to understand one more important point that is whenever if you use hyphen s option, then your terminal is not going to next line. That's why always the best practice is whenever if you use hyphen s option for your read command, after that line, immediately just use one empty echo in this way. Now let me run our script. I am providing password something. See that. But if you want to display wantedly, yes, you can display it using echo command. Uh, let's say password as let's say I love shell scripting something. That's it. So while typing, it is not displaying. But wantedly, we are displaying using echo command. That's why you are getting. That's it. And one more important point is, let me comment once again this logic. Suppose if you don't take any variable uh, in your read command, let's say enter your value. So I'm not taking any variable, but I'm trying to display a variable called your value is a variable called reply. Now see the result. I am running the shell script. I am giving some data. You are getting that. Actually, whatever the data you are entering, that data has to store into some variable, but we did not give a, any variable here. So if you don't provide any variable for read command, by default, whatever the data it is reading from command line, that data will go into store a variable called reply. That is the default variable for read command. That's it. Now let me comment this code as well. See, you know how to read multiple variables using multiple read commands. But instead of that, you can also use only one read command to read multiple variable values. Very simple. Simply read hyphen or let's say, uh, I am typing like enter your values. So I am taking two variables. Let's say my variable one and then my variable 2. Then I am displaying echo the var 1 is
and then let me copy paste this but this time i am going to display here variable 2 save it and run it now i am entering a values like shell scripting see the result so i have given input as shell scripting so shell is going to store into my variable 1 that's why for this you are getting shell output and scripting is going to store into this one so actually whatever the input you are giving that input is going to split based on spaces and then it is going to create number of fields so here there is a space that's why this is one field and this is second field first field will go and store into first variable second field will go and store into a second variable suppose if there is only one variable then all fields will go and store into only one variable be clear on that now let me run it so i am giving once again shell scripting see only this entire data is going to store into variable 1 that's why from 16th line whatever the output you are getting there you are seeing shell scripting but there is no data for variable 2 anyway nowhere we defined variable 2 that's why default value is always empty or nothing that's fine so be clear if if there is only one variable your entire input is going to store into that variable only but if there are multiple variables then your data is going to split based on space so here that is called internal field separator by default internal field separator for read command is space now let's say you use only two variables in your read command but i am passing uh, like shell scripting language now in this case what is the output now first of all there are multiple variables so anyway your data is going to split here and here that's why three fields are going to create so first field will go and store into my var1 second field will go and store into the second variable my var2 but for third field there is no variable that's why this third field also go and store into my variable 2 only see the result so if there are no more variables then last fields are going to store into last variable only that's it now by default internal field separator is space for your read command instead of that suppose if you want to use any other internal field separator then see what is the syntax for it let me comment this i will use same code so in this case what you have to do is in your while starting with your read command you have to mention your internal field separator in this way ifs equals to colon that means now let me run and you can understand sorry let me save it yeah let me run see enter your values i am typing shell colon scripting now see the result now you have two variables and your data is going to split based on colon not based on default internal field separator called space because you mentioned forcefully for read command use this as a field separator so based on this colon your string will be divided your input will be divided then first field will go and store into first variable second field go to second variable suppose if you don't have a fields required field separator in the input see suppose i am giving shell scripting then what will happen you mentioned use field separator as colon but there is no colon in the input that means there is no split will happen this entire thing will be considered as only first field and is going to store into my var1 only there is no data for my var2 that's why you are getting my var2 as empty that's it so be clear on that so just go to this slide pass the video and read this entire information you will get more clarity about ifs okay thank you